Hello friends, welcome back. In this video tutorial, we are going to discuss about the read write lock in Java. Read write lock, uh, it's a it's a interface. This is an interface which belongs to the Java dot util dot current dot locks package. Read write lock consists of pair of locks, one for read access and one for write access. The read lock may be held by multiple threads simultaneously as long as the write lock is not held by any thread. That's the key point always you will have to keep in mind. Now second point read write lock allows for an increased level of concurrency. It performs better compared to other locks in application where there are fewer writes than reads. Right? So you have a number of writes is very less but uh, you have a reading operation very frequently. So in that case your read write lock, so, uh, I mean read write lock is very good candidate in that case. Implementation class is called reiterant read write lock. So read write lock basically implements read write uh, reiterant read write lock class implements read write lock interface. Let's look uh, an example. So here you can see uh, first of all I have a counter. A class and there I am using reiterant read lock. So uh, reiterant read lock provides you a default constructor. Apart from that, if you go to the, this class, this class also provides you a constructor which accepts a boolean value. And this is called fairness policy. Here, while creating the instance of reiterant read write lock, you can pass the value as true. What do you mean by fairness policy? Means when uh, more than one thread uh, basically wants to acquire lock uh, to perform a kind of read or write operation then thread which is waiting from the longer time will get the chance uh, will get the first chance to acquire the lock that's the fairness uh, policy here i haven't taken i haven't passed the fairness policy so default value would be false now here yeah, this is interface and implementation of this this is the implementation class so I have created an object of implementation class and I have assigned to the reference of uh, its interface now I have initialized this counter variable with 0 even though if you do not initialize still default value of uh, def uh, instance variable would be 0 now I have a two method one is the increment and another is the get count so increment basically I want to perform the some kind of write operation on this instance variable uh, which is a count now uh, because this is a compound operation right this is in, in the computer language is a three steps process right first of all thread has to read the value of count then increment by one and final value will be assigned to the left side of variable right so this is the three steps process and that's the reason we want to protect this uh, operation right so this is a uh, there is chance uh, uh, for race condition while executing this compound operator right so suppose one thread is uh, doing some operation uh, uh, on this uh, variable then uh, meanwhile another thread can interrupt and that can make this uh, state of this uh, instance variable uh, corrupted right and, and that's the reason we want to protect it so that's the reason we want to execute this piece of code within the uh, uh, protected code right uh, or you can see synchronized uh, uh, synchronized uh, block right and that's the reason we have formed the synchronized block something like this so here we are not using synchronized keyword but uh, we are using a uh, uh, classes which is basically uh, by nature it's uh, it's uh, gives you some api to uh, protect your uh, critical code right so here basically you use reference of this log dot writer log so this will give you the writer log and you will have to call the method log so basically here thread will get the writer log and that do the some write operation and finally don't forget to release this log in the finally block right so again you will have to do log writer log dot unlock so this method will acquire the log and this is going to this piece of, this line of code is going to acquire the log on this object and finally this is going to release lock on the finally block similarly we have another method there we are doing read operation so we need to acquire lock on the uh, read read operation so read lock so that's what we are calling the read lock method and finally we are acquiring the lock and same we are releasing in the 
finally block pretty straightforward right and now come to the client program client program i have created a executor uh, with pool of size 3 so this will create a, a three worker uh, thread within the pool right and uh, here i have in this in uh, i have uh, initialized this executor service outside of the try block and instantiated within the try block uh, because i want to access this uh, executor service reference uh, within my finally block and that's the reason to initialize to outside of the try block and here uh, once i done with the executor service then finally i'm shutting down in the finally block right while calling the shutdown method Within this, you got to see that try block. Uh, we have created an object of counter. Now I have a three task: task one, task two, and task three. In task one, basically here I am printing the uh, thread name, who is basically doing the write operation on this uh, counter variable, right? So here we are calling a uh, increment method, right, by using counter reference. So whichever thread will get the chance first for the write. Operation that will increment value fifty thousand times, uh, which is task one, right? Now we have a task two. Simply we are printing the thread name, who is basically reading the value of this counter variable, and final value we are trying to print over here. And similar action we are taking in the, the task three as well, right? Now we are submitting first task, which is basically nothing but the write operation on the counter variable, right? By calling the increment method. and uh, after that uh, what we have done we are making pause of 3 seconds giving this task to complete this giving the, this task to complete right and that's what we are taking pause of 3 seconds right so executor service is having a method is called await termination and there you can specify the time in many formats so here i have taken as a 3 uh, seconds in seconds now i am also executing task 2 and task 3 which is basically printing the final value of the counter variable right and that's all this is pretty straight forward so here we have a one writer thread right and two reader thread right and let's run this application cool so here you can see thread pool 1 thread 1 writing on the count variable right that's the coming uh, that the, that's the output coming from the uh, uh, task first now thread uh, pool 1 thread 2 getting value of the count variable and that is printing 50000 again pool 1 thread 3 getting value of the so these two are the reader thread basically over here and first is the writer thread and we get the value 50000 right so that's all i wanted to discuss in this video tutorial once more uh, i would discuss about this class in this example uh, basically multiple reads can execute the get count method as long as no thread calls increment method right if any thread calls increment method and acquires the writer log or write log then all the reader threads will pause their execution and wait for the writer thread to return because we are using here read write log right so that's all i have in this video tutorial this code i am going to check in on the github and github location i will specify in the video description itself if you really like this video then please hit on the like button and please share and subscribe my youtube channel as well guys big thank you for watching this video and see you there in next video tutorial